Hello everyone. Welcome to Reaching for the Moon, the first flight of Artemis I and Orion's journey of a half a million miles has finally begun. Six years late and several billion dollars over the original budget, the Artemis I launch has finally occurred. Last week, Hurricane Nicole made landfall on the east coast of Florida, just south of Cape Kennedy, and moved across the state. Fortunately, Nicole was only a tropical storm by the time it reached us in Naples. However, before Nicole had appeared on the scene, NASA had moved the Artemis I SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft back to the launch pad at Cape Kennedy in anticipation of a planned launch date of November 14th. NASA decided to let the Artemis I SLS and Orion spacecraft ride out the hurricane on the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. After the storm blew through, NASA announced the delay to the Artemis launch date to November 16th and found that high winds from the coal had caused a thin strip of caulking known as RTV to delaminate and pull away from the base of the Orion crew capsule's protective nose cone at the top of the rocket. After much thought and deliberation, NASA finally cleared the agency's leak bedeviled Artemis moon rocket for launch and started another countdown in an attempt to make Wednesday at 1.04 a.m. With only a short delay because of another hydrogen valve leak, NASA finally launched Artemis in a spectacular night launch on November 16th. Here's a short video clip leading up to the launch. NASA is still targeting Wednesday, November 16th for an uncrewed mission to the moon. Artemis 1 planned to launch Monday, November 14th, but was delayed after Tropical Storm Nicole battered Central Florida this week. Technicians found some minor damage to the Artemis rocket, but NASA said it can be easily repaired. The goal for the Artemis One is to see if the U.S. can get back to the moon and, if so, establish a long-term base for research. The lunar mission is planned to last 25 days with a splash down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of San Diego. On your screen now is an image of the SLS rocket lifting off the launch pad with Orion at Kennedy Space Center. NASA's uncrewed Artemis One mission has now been launched on a journey that will carry Orion spacecraft around the moon and back to Earth on a 25 and a half day trek through space. Rather than astronauts, a mannequin named Commander Munikin Campos will be at the helm of the Orion spacecraft with two mannequin torsos called Helga and Zohar along for the ride. These mannequin torsos are made of materials that mimic the soft tissue organs and bones of humans. The two torsos each have more than 5,600 sensors and 3,434 3, radiation detectors to measure how much radiation exposure occurs during the mission. And along with the ride also are 10 shoebox sized CubeSat satellite experiments. These small satellites which will be deployed after Orion has reached space. Okay, let's review the Artemis major components, of which there are four. It's the Space Launch System rocket, the Orion spacecraft, the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, and a launch abort system. The SLS rocket includes the core stage and two solid rocket boosters. The core stage is powered by four RS-25 engines, and it's accompanied by two solid fuel boosters. The SLS rocket will lift off the pad with 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. After liftoff, the solid rocket boosters separated from the spacecraft about two minutes into the flight and then splashed down into the Atlantic Ocean. The core stage of the rocket separated about six minutes later and fell into the Pacific Ocean. Unfortunately, none of the SLS rocket is reusable. An interim cryogenic propulsion stage, which powers Orion to the moon once it has reached space in what is referred to as a translunar injection burn. This burn causes Orion 
to escape the pull of Earth's gravity and set off to the moon. After the burn, the ICPS separated from Orion and enters into an orbit around the sun. The Space Launch System also includes a launch abort system atop NASA's Space Launch System rocket. The launch abort system is used to safely lift the Orion crew away from the SLS launch vehicle in the event of an emergency on the launch pad or during the ascent phase of the rocket. Well, Orion is finally on its way on a very exciting journey. We'll keep you posted about the journey over the next three weeks. If you like this video, press the button. Press the subscribe button to receive an email every time Reaching for the Moon posts a new video. Thank you for watching, and remember always, failure is not an option. Bye. <laughs>